If you love learning about art from other cultures, this is a great way to investigate African art and the fabulous artist Lois Milu Jones. Start by sketching your mask large, filling up most of your paper. Draw light until it's right. Focus first on just your large shapes. Once I have the outline of my mask, I go back and I add at least five geometric lines in the background. Geometric lines are vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. Geometric shapes are all over African art, and since that's what's inspiring my oil pastel drawing, I'm gonna keep things very geometric shape oriented. Once my background is mapped out, I'm gonna add some more large shapes inside my mask. I'm keeping it big because oil pastels are hard to get in small little details. I wanna include my major facial features like my nose, my eyes, and a mouth, and then of course I wanna add lots of details that make my mask have facial expressions and patterns. like to include several shapes that extend from the mask itself that kind of interact with the background. I'm adding some more patterns, but I'm keeping my shapes really large. My oil pastels really can't get teeny tiny sections, and so I'm just mapping out large shapes that I find interesting. Also, looking at different examples of African art and African patterns is a really great way to inspire your artwork. And now, color. I'm using my old Faithful Oil Pastels to fill in color. Instead of just filling one color per section, I'm gonna to try to do as much shading and blending as absolutely possible. This is not a typical coloring book crayon type of situation. I wanna shade, I wanna blend, I wanna include gradients, so that this work of art not only has the patterns I'm interested in, but just looks three-dimensional. starting dark in the center and then I'm fading out to red then I'll add orange and yellow to give it a really 3d effect speed things up. Now that I have the basic colors on my face, I'm going to add colors that go along with my color scheme but also stand out like my blue eyebrows. I'm including blending in almost every single section. So I didn't just do blue, I did black, dark blue, and light blue just to give my mask as much detail and craftsmanship as I'm able to do. I'm continuing with the same style and technique in my background, trying to blend as much as I can without being overwhelmed by all those shapes. I like to add some colors that go along with my mask, but are also very different, like the pink in the triangles in the corner. Details, details, details. I'm always struggling asking myself, did I add too many details? Did I not add enough? And go back and use colors that stand out against each other. Black is always a good choice with something like this to create areas that have emphasis and clean lines. 
Pastels can be really smudgy. They can get all over your fingers, and if you're not careful, you can smudge them with your palm. Get in the habit of using a tissue to cover up your palm so you're not smudging your work, and you go back and clean things up once the pastels dry a little bit. In a day or two, the pastels won't be as smudgy, and you can even spray it with a spray fixative at the end so it never smudges again. This artwork is a great way to blend with oil pastels and to explore the amazing art of Lois Milo Jones and African masks. If you've never checked out her work before, you have to. It's super interesting and has such amazing connections.